Serenby is a place where the innate connections humans have with nature and all living things is celebrated through work and play. And we're here to tell the stories of those who have been inspired by this biophilic way of life in our community and across the country. This is Serenby Stories. You may have thought wellness was just a buzzword, but it's also a $4.5 trillion economy, with the wellness real estate sector making up $134 billion of that. These figures were determined through extensive research done by the Global Wellness Institute. The Institute is the research arm of the Global Wellness Summit, an annual think tank event made up of industry leaders and releases an annual must-read trends forecast. In today's episode, we talk with Institute Chairman and CEO Susie Ellis and Chief Creative Officer, Executive Director Nancy Davis about the importance of sharing research and information to help people live healthier lives, proving the value of global wellness. Listen today to hear how wellness is more than just a great spa day. But first, Serenby Stories is brought to you by The Inn at Serenby. The Inn is nestled in the rolling countryside of bucolic Serenby, where guests can walk on the 15 miles of trails through preserved forest land, the wildflower meadow, and the animal village. You can relax by the pool, hot tub, or in rocking chairs on the wraparound porch. Play on the croquet lawn, swings, and in-ground trampolines. Connect with nature and each other, all while staying in luxurious rooms on the in-grounds or within the community of Serenby. Book your stay today at serenbyinn.com. Well, I want to welcome everybody back to Serenby Stories. And today we have a couple wonderful women with us today. We have Susie Ellis and we have Nancy Davis, CEO and Chief Creative Officer of the Global Wellness Summit and the Global Wellness Institute, as well as we have Steve Nygren with us again. Um, Welcome, everybody. How is everybody? Well, it's great to hear yours and thanks for having us. Yes, thank you, Steve. It's great to be here. And hello, Monica. Hi, guys. How are you? Um, and we're going to hopefully get to see you guys in person in November, right? Absolutely. Um, one of the things I ask everybody as we sort of kick off our conversations is, how did you guys originally meet Steve Nygren and sort of come into our world? I think I should let you start with that, Nancy. Since I, you were- say, I, think, I, I think I was the uh, connector here. Um, my relationship with Serenby, which is many, many years old now, began with Claire Martirana, who was a resident yes. at Serenby and an incredibly close friend of mine for years and years. And in 2013, when I got involved with the summit and with Susie's World, Claire was one of my first calls because she was at WebMD. Yeah. And I thought she's going to be incredibly interested in this whole world and what we're doing. And the next thing I knew, I was at Serenby visiting Claire. Um, <laughs> and she exposed me to this extraordinary place. Um, I had never, ever experienced anything like it. And she was really living a kind of wellness lifestyle that brought everything that we'd been talking about at the summit to life. She became involved. She came. The summit that year was in India. She came to India. Um, she was absolutely amazed. She introduced me to Steve. Steve became part of our world. Next thing I know, she introduced us to Renee Moorfield, who was also living at Serenby. Renee yeah. is now a member of the board of the Institute. She's very active running initiatives, and she writes the content for our Wellness Moonshot every month. So the points of connection between Saren B and us is there there are many of them. They go deep and they go long. And Steve has spoken at our summits. He's received an award from us. Saren B is part of our research. He's just an incredibly um Saren B is just an authentic pioneering place when it comes to wellness communities. We tell everybody about Saren B. And um, in fact, it's the post-summit trip this year. So we hope a lot of people um, will get an immersion into Serenity. But it started with Claire Martirano. We love Claire. I love Claire, too. And then you brought Susie to visit. That was uh, the first time, I think. Yes. That's right. So I was hearing from Nancy, and I met Claire at our summit in India. This was the Global Wellness Summit that we did there. Um, Even the Dalai Lama came and spoke and 
you know, was with us. So it was a very special event. And that's where I met Claire. And actually, that's where Nancy and I first started working together. So at any rate, after the summit, I'm hearing about Serenity. And I'm thinking, what is this? And (laughs) we ended up having, um, we decided to meet there. And that was my first experience. I met Steve there. And, um, you know, Steve, you were gracious to show us everything. And it was just such a such a an experience it's hard to even uh, articulate because it's like you had put together the very thing that we had been discussing for many many years places where people could live a wellness lifestyle and so we were there for quite a few days and we were able to uh, experience and see and uh, really kind of feel the place and ever since then we certainly have been a champion of having more people know about Serenby and uh, then I would say as we uh, you know as an organization we are the Global Wellness Summit which started uh, about 14 years years ago, we then added the Global Wellness Institute, which is our nonprofit and it's our research arm. And we decided to do a major research study on the wellness, real estate and wellness communities arena. And so we did come out with a 2018 big report called Build Well to Live Well. It took a whole year to do the report. And of course, Steve was very instrumental in contributing to it. Sarah and B is, of course, uh, featured there. And it also talks about what's happening globally. And um, in fact, there were 750 or so uh I would say, uh, I wouldn't say places like Sarah because there's nothing like Sarah and B, but F- efforts around the world to start doing things that are wellness oriented and community oriented. So it's a really great report. I think it's still a, a real landmark. And, um, and I think we really have Serenby to thank for being, I would, I call it the poster child. Yes, the inspiration. But this is like a, a mutual admiration because it, it, it's two worlds <laughs> come together because as I've tried to articulate the importance of wellness. And then once uh, I met Susie and Nancy and really found out about the Global Wellness Summit uh, and, and the Institute, uh, you articulated a lot of the things that we were trying to say and do it, as it related to, to lifestyle. Uh, and then, of course, yeah. it, 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 it comes down to, to places, uh, the way we're building places for people to live. So, uh, just thank you for, for, for bringing that conversation for people all over the world from the various areas and bringing that all together. And, and now uh, putting capital dollars on it, which is what really moves markets. And you, uh, you all have been just uh, brilliant in doing that. Yeah, I would really credit you guys just to support that from a brand marketing. You know, you've really put a fine point on sort of the wellness real estate industry. And I mean, we really appreciate that because people have had a very hard time sort of defining what Serum B is. And they've tried to put us in a bunch of different buckets. And I feel like the wellness um, lifestyle community real estate is where we sort of landed. And it, it has really propelled us. And the work you did in the research is a huge reason for that. So... Yes, very much. Thank fact, you. Susie, isn't that, share with us, you know, kind of the base of, of the Global Wellness uh, Institute and how, how you realized that this was an important component. Yes. Well, you know, um, going back 14 years ago, when we began, we actually were uh, the Global uh, Spa Summit, because at that time, the spa industry was, there was no industry. There was just a lot of places all over the world doing things that help people in body, mind, spirit, but they were not connected in any way. And so we put together an event and then did our first research on the spa economy. And uh, we hired these great researchers and they did something that was so valuable to us. And I think it speaks also to what, what happened later with wellness real estate and communities. They looked at what was a fragmented non-industry at that time, we called it spa. And they said, you know, globally, if you look at what's going on out there, there's a lot of things happening, but you're not talking together and you're not coming out with one uh, story. So people are not, um, you know, in fact, at that time, there was a lot of disagreement about what spa even is. So they did a year-long study, and it was actually a company called SRI International that was 
uh, founded a Stanford Research Institute who we hired to do this research. And the bottom line is they did this year study and they came up with a suggestion for those of us who are in this fragmented world saying, you know, if you could agree to be under an umbrella of a very general definition of spa, which they suggested would be places where people renew body, mind, and spirit. Hmm. And then you can have lots of categories underneath that uh, because people were saying, well, I'm a resort spa or I'm a medical spa or I'm a day spa or I'm a Mm -hmm. um, Ayurvedic spa in India, et cetera. You can have all those categories. And then what you can do is you can add up the revenue from all of these places and come up with one number that you can present saying, you know, Sure. We're an industry worth listening to. And that is what happened 14 years ago. So based on that, we then, as you know, you know, the spa world became more of the wellness world, which we also found through our research. But going back then to real estate and communities, we were starting to see that this was happening in different ways around the world. And we thought, you know, it might be good to study um, what's happening and again, how we can uh, come together because being one force is much more uh, successful and -hmm. putting a number on that is much more something people listen to than everyone trying to talk to the world because it is very difficult. As you know, if, if just Sarah and B is talking to, you know, New York Times and all of the people that are interested, it's hard for them to understand what this is about. So we, I think that the research also helped because we were able to put a number on this is what's happening in this segment. And, um, you know, people were paying attention to it. It was like real estate people said, wow. This is really fantastic and interesting, and we need to learn more. So, and the other thing, and I just have to really credit Steve and Serenby for this, the attitude of being willing to share information and data and come together is really what makes this work because we realize we all want more people to live healthfully. Um, and so if Sarah B is doing something great, that is very valuable. But we also want, you know, Ranch La Puerta that are doing residences now. We want that to be successful, too, because that helps the whole arena. And Steve has been so gracious about uh, inviting people to Sarah B, opening up, showing, helping. And so, Steve, thank you for what you've contributed to helping this grow in a healthy way because you're a good example of something that's really authentic and working. And uh, so we're really excited. We, You know, it's still the beginning uh, globally, but you are showing that it can be done and has been done, and it's really making a difference in people's lives. Thank you. If we, if we all shine our light wherever we can, we can change this world. Definitely, definitely. Um, Susie, tell me how you came to this sort of world in the beginning. I know that you sort of started out doing sort of more of a spa summit, but where did your interest begin? Has this been a lifelong sort of journey or where did you start? Well, thankfully, um, it has been a lifelong journey. I, right out of college, which now was many decades ago, uh, one of my first um, jobs was with the Golden Door which yes. is a very, you know, well-known and successful spa in Southern California. Deborah Zake, who is the founder and still living, she's 97 now. Amazing. Um, she, I worked for her right after college and I saw uh, the Golden Door is a place where people came on Sunday and left a week later and they had all these lifestyle experience. They, you know, had healthy food, exercise, massages, um, inner door kinds of experiences, stress reduction, and people literally changed in that one week. And I saw this just, you know, I was a fitness instructor at the time, but I saw this transformation and I was just, you know, thrilled to be part of it. And this was back in the 70s when, you know, actually the <laughs> door was called a fat farm. So <laughs> we didn't even use the word spa at the time. Right. But uh, that is where I started. And then my career has just continued in that vein. I went back and, you know, went to graduate school and did an MBA and worked for a variety of people and consulted and so on. But I was able to, and this is what I really appreciate that I was able to be part of this movement 
from the 70s. So I've seen a lot of the development, and I think that's why it's been a little easier to see how things are unfolding, which is why, you know, seeing what's happening with nature and people wanting to live a healthy lifestyle and why spa, you know, morphed into wellness and Mm -hmm. that sort of thing, you know, I've been able to see that. So I've just always been in that arena, um, fast forwarding um my husband and i ended up um being involved and we purchased a company called spa finder Hmm. which was in new york we were there for about 15 years and then um we put together the global wellness summit um as a result of being part of spa finder and then spa finder later was sold but uh we maintained the summit and grew it and added the institute and i will just say that nancy you know she came along actually as such an important part of why we have now grown the way we've grown and become so international Mm -hmm. because her background is such that she has been able to add a lot of sizzle and a lot of excitement Mm -hmm. and creativity Mm -hmm. to, you know, some of what we're talking about, but she's really made it come alive with events and uh, ways of connecting people. And so uh, that's, you know, a big part of the story too. Yeah. Well, and Nancy, you were at RISD. Yes, I was. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your background and sort of, um, cause yeah, your hand or fingerprints are all over um, the amazing work that they're doing, but tell us a little bit about your time prior and then getting involved. Sure. Sure. I, um, my, I, so I went to RISD. I've been a person involved in creativity and the arts my entire life still am. And, um, and what happened to me is that I, you know, I went to RISD. I moved to New York after RISD, as many uh, RISD students do. Yeah. And, um, you know, got very involved in producing things. I found I could write and I have a degree in photography and graphic design. And I could put all of those things together and discovered that there were actually places that wanted those things together. And so I became a producer um, mm-hmm. and a sort of creative director at, um, at an agency in New York. And I, three years in, could see that um, climbing that ladder was not actually giving me a whole lot of satisfaction because I like to make things. Yeah. I like to actually do things. Mm-hmm. I don't like to sit, what I was, what, what happens in an agency system is you, you know, you do very well, you get promoted. And the next thing you know, you're just sending other people out to do the work you, you used to do. <laughs> and three years in, I thought that's not for me. And I went on mm-hmm. my own. And I've been that, uh, you know, sort of independent entrepreneurial um, ever since. And, um, you know, what happened to me is that I had a mutual friend of the organization of the summit who, when they were going to India, mm-hmm. said, OK, we got to get we need a professional. I mean, I think before then, like Susie was putting the microphones on the speakers. I mean, it was just <laughs> you know a little bit bare bones. And and they and so somebody recommended that I go meet with Susie and a whole bunch of her team and see what I could do. You know, the, the short story is that I went to India to produce that summit, no site visit, just a couple of months before oh you know, deep end of the pool. <laughs> it was the most astounding experience to this day. Um, it was just wonderful. I completely fell in love with not just the team and you know, the organization, but with all of the people that showed up. And, um, you know, the, the, the warmth and the openness and the collaborative spirit of this group was Mm -hmm. really very different. I've done tons and tons of work in the corporate world. Um, Mm -hmm. I worked in children's television. I mean, I've done a million things, all very creative, but this was something else. You know, this had a soul and that Mm -hmm. really touched me. And I literally never left. I mean, (laughs) I went as a, you know, just, a producer freelancing to do this one project. And that was it. I, you know, kind of turned off the corporate part, turned on this part. And I have to say that, you know, Susie and I talk a lot about our, our sort of secret sauce between us, this collaborative thing that we have. Um, and it's really, it drives everything and it's very inspiring. It's mm-hmm. very creative. And I get to make stuff. I still get to make things, you know, right. um, it's a, maybe it's a summit, maybe it's a press event in New York, maybe mm-hmm. it's, um, you know, initiatives at an institute. It, it, we make stuff mm-hmm. and, um, it's really, it's the greatest joy of my life. Absolutely. 
That's incredible. So now you've been with them for seven years. We're now 2020. Yep. The pandemic hits. We, I've been to, I haven't been to any summits. Steve's now been to, I don't know, multiple summits all over the world. Started in Morocco. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think Italy, was there Mexico maybe? Sure. And I've had the privilege of going to your New York press events, which have been phenomenal. And you've partnered with Hearst, um, which has been incredible. And I think prevention now. But um, with the pandemic, like what has happened and how have you pivoted? And, you know, what are you guys doing now? I've been in a few of your virtual calls, but tell us a little bit like it's a crazy time. You want me to start? (laughs) <laughs> sure. And, and because this, you know, Nancy mentioned the secret sauce, which is really a collaboration between Nancy and me and our board and our, the larger uh, network out there. Um, but why don't you explain a little bit about what happened and why we decided we are going to do our summit sure. and how we decided also this would be such a great opportunity to include Serenby as um, an opportunity for our delegates to actually experience. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, phenomenal. the pandemic hit. Um, you know, I will say that we've been working remotely as a team on Zoom forever. So, you know, when, when the world started turning to Zoom and talking about Zoom, like Zoom was like, oh my God, it's so last week. You know, we've been on Zoom for like 10 years working. But anyway, um, but now the whole world was on Zoom. But within weeks, literally within weeks, of that happening, we started holding series of calls to keep our network engaged and together and to continue the collaboration that has really helped everyone in the industry. So, you know, the first we held calls by sector of the industry. Um, every Tuesday, we held what we call the global wellness collaboration calls, Bond Hospitality, you know, Thermal Mineral Springs, Workplace Wellness, all of them came together And they came from all over the world. And I mean, our calls to this day attract hundreds of people from 60, 70 countries per call. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And people were calling in to share their circumstances and to and together to see how we could maybe help each other through this. I share ideas, share triumphs, share the the despair. Um, And, you know, we saw a, a trajectory. Um, you know, over these many, many months, because we, we, you know, just we're about to launch a new series, but we just finished that series after visiting all of those sectors three times, you know, from the utter despair to the reopening of a yeah. lot of that, this, of those businesses. So it was a very interesting time, you know, and it was sort of timeline to, to view that. We also do a series called the Wellness Masterclass. Mm-hmm. And that's been, you know, in a way, the keynote speakers. Um, You know, we grab very, very high level uh, thought leaders and business leaders to talk about something important. Again, beginning at the time, you know, creativity in the time of COVID. How do you stay, you know, agile and creative with all this going on in the world? To now, you know, last week we had Bill Bensley talking about the most extraordinary projects he's doing all over the world. You know, it was more creativity without COVID in a way. Um, and, you know, in, in, in the midst of all of that, you know, we had a summit planned in Tel Aviv. Um, and when all of this hit, you know, one of the early decisions we had to make was we knew that Tel Aviv was probably not going to work. Mm-hmm. Um, that, you know, asking people to travel internationally from the U.S., from Europe to the Middle East, et cetera, et cetera, was not going to work. It was also very special for us to be for the first time in the Middle East and, you know, like really important partners there, but we all agreed it wasn't going to happen. And, um, you know, we decided we should hold it in the United States. And actually Steve was one of the first phone calls because we tried to actually see if we could hold the summit at Serenby. And, um, you know, this is now, now I don't want the breakers to feel like they're, you know, second best, (laughs) <laughs> um, but, you know, we thought, well, we should take people to a wellness community. There's never been a better time. But obviously what worked out best was to have the summit at the Breakers in person with as many people as can get there. And we are having registrations from all over the world. They will tell you as well as sponsorships from all over the world. And then to have registered delegates do an immersion at Serenby and really see what it's like to live inside a community like that. So, you know, people were coming at us, you know, do a virtual event, 
stream it, do this, don't actually go. And, you know, mm-hmm. we really felt that our event can't really be replicated online. It was mm-hmm. very important for people to be there. And, and, you know, we get a lot of positive feedback about, you know, wow, it's really in person. Okay. That's, you know, terrific. Um, <laughs> and I'm, and I'm hoping a lot of your readership and listenership will, um, you know, will figure they can just drive down to Florida for that event. Uh-huh. Um, but, you know, the Breakers is going to be a place where, you know, it's safe to be. Um, they exceed all the protocols. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, Susie and I got on a call right away with Rich Carmona, who's on our board, um, and asked him to be medical advisor to the summit. So he's somebody mm-hmm. who's on the front lines of dealing with this pandemic. He was the 17th Surgeon General. The U.S. is very involved in the health and safety in, in public health. And, um, and he, you know, he said, you know, you have to figure out how to live inside this, not just hide out, you know, the yeah. parallel pandemic of isolation and mental health issues are, you know, are rampant. So we are, we are holding our summit. Tell me, because, um, you know, I, I feel like um, it's a very, I don't want to use the word exclusive, but a very, the, the leaders in the business are really the people that are coming. Tell us or tell our listeners, like, how can you go? Like, what is their criteria? Like, how can, and, and if they can't attend, how can they get involved? Sure. Well, the um, the Global Wellness uh, Summit was really modeled after the World Economic Forum. My husband and I had attended the World Economic Forum for a few years before we started the, the summit 14 years ago. Mm-hmm. And we recognized how valuable it was to invite the leaders in an industry to come together because there could be a lot of think tank kinds of conversation that could Mm -hmm. be very valuable. And so that's what we modeled it after. So we did make it, um, you know, an invitation kind of an event where we invited the top people um, from places all over the world in various uh, um, parts of what we now call the uh, wellness economy. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so, therefore, th- those are the people that are invited. However, and it is not inexpensive, you know, people attend and it's, you know, over $4,000 to come. Um, interestingly enough, we have people that come year after year because they find that it is quite valuable. There's not, um, uh, you know, there's always at least a $4,000 idea or a, a, a connection with someone else that that becomes extremely uh, valuable. Uh, but we also realize that, you know, wellness is for all. And we do want to, you know, make sure that information that we provide is available for more people. So therefore, we have decided many years ago that we make all of our research available for free. So on the Global Wellness Institute website, all the research, including the one um, that I mentioned called Build Well to Live Well, um, is available and it is for free. Also, we put on our website after the summit the uh, speaker uh, videos so anyone can... uh, um, access that and become part of that. And then all of our virtual discussions, like Nancy mentioned, the master classes and our uh, various collaborative uh, discussions, those are available to anyone. So um, if they go to either of our two websites, Global Wellness Summit dot com or globalwellnessinstitute.org, uh, there's ways to get involved. There's ways to get involved on the mailing list to get all of our uh, information mm-hmm. that we share, the trends that we do, which uh, are very popular. Uh, so we have built a big network and we want it to be a very inclusive network. So uh, that's mm-hmm. how it started and how it's grown. And really the one silver lining for in the pandemic is that our audience has grown also. There's more people that are joining because of our virtual conversations mm-hmm. and um, the information we're putting out. So right. more people are talking about wellness and more people are talking about wellness communities and wellness real estate. Yeah, yeah that's, I think that's you know key is that the world has turned to wellness during this. I mean, this has been a silver lining that lots of people have talked about. Steve, I know you've had record numbers as well. Um, you know, people are thinking now, how can I boost my immunity? How can I be healthy? What are the preventative steps I'm supposed to take? How can I make sure the air quality, how can I live outside? How can I, you know, all these things that we've been talking to, about for a long time have really come to a head in a really public global way. And mm-hmm. it's, you know, it has provided 
uh, incredible opportunities. I mean, it's not an opportunity, you know, wouldn't have wanted it to come this way. But since it has come this way, the opportunities are immense um, in the wellness world, in the wellness communities. I mean, we are hearing about, uh, you know, a very robust sector in wellness communities. I'm sure you, Steve, you can talk to that, you know, better than we can, but we are hearing it from a lot of people. No, it's really, this is a time that everyone's reanalyzing. We've been on such a busy, what I call the treadmill of life, that we haven't stopped to to think. Uh, And now people are thinking. Um, And and not only are we busy, the the interesting thing is we're getting calls from developers, uh, city council people, uh, all over on how can we uh, change, how can we do this? Because uh, they're all seeing it's important and the market's going to be asking the, the hard questions. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like Serenby is that is a is a real it's it's very unique for a lot of reasons. I mean, a real sort of sweet spot. Um, you know, we he, we hear about a lot of wellness communities that are being developed and being built. They're very they're sort of vast and they have you know all kinds of things. But the thing that struck me about Serenby and I, you know, I don't even know if this is part of your um, master plan, was it made me feel a lot about my childhood. I I felt like it was a step back in time in a way at the same mm-hmm. time that it was, um, it had all the sort of modern sciences and all of that. But I felt like it was really a home and a community. Um, I grew up in a small town in New England and it felt like I had come home, but somebody had thought about everything for me. And, but it was very authentic. I think that's a really difficult thing to achieve. Um, that, authenticity when you're building something new that makes that harkens back to something that is familiar and familial. And, um, you know, I really credit, um, you know, Steve has a lot of heart and I feel like it's a place of heart. And that's what I felt when I was there. And I think that's why people come to you and, and, and want to know how you do that. Um, and it, I don't think it's, you know, necessarily that you can, you know, pop up a serenity everywhere. I mean, people have to have, you know, a sort of heart and soul about it. And and um, anyway, it's just it's always it's always remained very clear to me how I felt when I was there, not just what I was taking in intellectually. Well, thank you. Thank you, Nancy. And of course, what 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 we have realized is it's a remembering. It's not creating something new. It's remembering what life was at another time. And, and the key thing is, is connecting to nature and understanding uh, how, we, how we feel uh, is a huge part about our mental and physical health. And that's what we see and, what, and, and the senses, uh, you know, with all the noise and all the things that are happening in our built environment today. And so we really looked at all that to, uh, to bring it back. And, and, and I'm amazed because Serenby is being held up as this unique place that isn't everywhere. Uh, and, and, and while I'm pleased about that, it makes me sad because Serenby is just about common sense. And how have we stepped away from common sense in so many things about our daily life? And, and hopefully this pause, uh, I think what's happening is common sense is coming back because we're, we're looking at each other every day in a more intimate way than we've ever, than we have in a long time, back to where we were 50, 60 years ago when, when we were all kids in a, in, in a place that we connected as families and communities in different ways than we are today. So, uh, uh, and I think this is, a, while, while it's difficult right now, I think we're going to have some long-term positive effects from it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, and I think that that feeling that you get um, is true, and we hear those stories, um, and actually – you know, to just sort of give you guys further credit, you know, two people have moved here because of they came through the summit. You know, we've well, we're, we're, we're now, yeah, that's three, yeah, yeah, three people, two households. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry, three people. Wait, 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 well, it's actually one more. Oh, who's, who's one just moved in? Oh, who's that? And they're checking it out. Uh, Natalie, um, Natalie Buto Wells, Willis. I don't know if you know her, but she's a global sonist person. And Good she, girl, just, all right. she just moved in last week. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, and you introduced us to um, Jennifer Walsh. We met at one of your press events, and I, I believe she had done um, one of the research trends that year, um, which was about connecting with nature, right? Yes. Um, and we became such fast friends, and Steve and I fell in love with her. She came and did a whole series of her walks with Walsh. <laughs> here at Serenby that was sponsored by Mother Dirt. Um, and she's just become a great friend. And I think, you know, another mutual admiration. I believe she, you guys have a podcast, which we should shout out on the, to our listeners. Um, and she, I think she's going to be on this season. Tell us a little bit about the podcast. So we do podcasts and we do live casts on Instagram. And um, both of them really fun and powerful. We work with um, Kim Marshall and Darlene Fisk. Give them a little mm-hmm. shout out at Swell right. Public Relations. Um, they do a terrific job of putting those together. And yeah, we, we you know, Bill Bensley did one. They're really fun. And it's just, you know, we really stepped up our social media a bit. It's an area that, you know, by the time we do everything we do with the small team that we have, um, you know, social media is not top of the list. But, sure. you know, we're seeing a tremendous, this is what Susie referenced as sort of the growth of our network. A part mm-hmm. of that is through social media. And as people do have more time and they're taking a walk and they're listening to a podcast, um, you know, we, we jumped on that as well. We started doing podcasts at our summit in Singapore last year and um, they have continued and people find them very, very valuable. Jennifer is terrific. Um, she's doing a live cast, I think, this week. Wonderful. Yeah, she's yeah, wonderful. Yeah. She's so fantastic. Um, tell me, you know, cause she had done one of the trends and that's something that we haven't really talked about. Obviously the global wellness real estate was a report, a research report, but you also do these industry t- trends every year. And I believe you release them at the summit every year. Is that kind of when you tease them out? No, no, no. At the, at the press event. Yes. That's okay. what, we do, what we do. And, you know, we have become known for our trend forecasts, mm-hmm. um, which we started many, many years ago, um, because what we find is that to really uh, look and we don't just report trends that are happening. We we look at the future. And so yes. we are um, helping people see further down the road. Yes. And um, so what we do, and we have this formula for looking at the trends. And part of it is that we study during the year, we do a lot of reading, we interview people, but the summit is a resource for input to mm-hmm. what the next year's trends are. Huh. So, um, so the trends actually come out in January with the press event. Um, and, um, you know, we have all of these people meeting at the summit. So um, we get a lot of very valuable information. And I'll just mention that, you know, we're, it's always eight or 10 trends um, looking forward. But in 2019, one of the trends was prescribing nature. And yes. that is what, um, because we were seeing that even in Europe, there are doctors that actually prescribe nature. They, you know, okay, you must do this and this and this. And in Japan with forest bathing, you yep. know, it becomes a prescription. And so we helped bring that out. And of course, uh, seeing, uh, you know, Serenby and nature. And by the way, Steve, I don't know, maybe you've done this on other podcasts, but I was so struck by the story you told me about the school children who were not getting sick because they were meeting um, outside at Serenby. And I just thought, you know, I've, I've thought of that so often now with this pandemic. Mm-hmm. And of course, with our Global Wellness Summit, which, by the way, is going to be in November at the Breakers. And we're going to do a lot of things outside. But that that story, the school children, have you talked about that on, on your podcast before? Oh, I'm sure we have. Yeah. I mean, at various times. But yeah, it, it shows you. I mean, this is our, our charter school, I think you're referring to, uh, although we have the same thing at our Acton Academy here at, uh, right uh, on campus. But uh, the charter school is really bringing children from from underprivileged, really a, a lot of lower income because of the charter, 500 kids. Um, and uh, the, the the average uh, missed days in Georgia uh, due to health is, is 13 uh, or higher. Uh, and, uh, that was true in our local schools. And so suddenly the charter school with classes outside in the second year, uh, absenteeism, uh, became, uh, so low it was rounded out to zero. Uh, and the difference is that they were spending a third of every school day outside, no matter what the weather was. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it shows you that, you know, we, we think these, this is such a difficult thing, 
uh, and, and it just seems huge in changing all the problems of the world. But if we just start taking these first small steps, and they're for school children, a third of the day outside. Mm-hmm. Uh, very simple. But, but it was difficult for parents. The kids were getting dirty. And, you know, <laughs> it's just things we're not used to. But as Nancy said, it's the way we all grew up years ago. <laughs> let's, let's come back to that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Patrick Muhammad, who's the principal over there, is actually one of our guests um, this season on the podcast to talk about the school and how biophilia and integrating the outdoors and agriculture and sustainability is, you know, huge core components for the school. So we're going to get like an update from him on sort of like what he's seen now, because I want to say the school has now been around for at least six years. Um, So I think that's going to be interesting conversation. And this, you know, a lot of this came from the the principles that uh, Richard Liu has, has uh, advocated through uh, Children and Nature Network now. And the executive director of Children and Nature Network has just moved here from Minneapolis. Uh, so we're getting all sorts of key things. And then the Rodale Institute, which is really dealing with soil health, uh, they're opening their Southeast uh, Research Center here. So we're really becoming a hub of a lot of these various disciplines, which is exactly what you all are doing with uh, the Global Wellness Institute. And, uh, and so CeraVe is kind of that, that place that people can touch it and feel it. And, and a lot of these programs are actually happening here on the ground. Yeah. You're going to bring them all to the summit, right, Steve, like we discussed? Uh, well, absolutely. Well, okay, good. <laughs> yeah, well, well, and this will come out a couple of weeks before. So I don't know if that's, people will still have time to sign up, but I think that's important yes. and we'll promote it prior. Um, you know, one of the things I, I believe, um, you know, I was talking with Michelle Gamble in um, resetting, right? It's um, resetting your wellness is I think the or re- resetting is the theme of the summit this year. Resetting Zachary? the world with wellness. Perfect. So talk about that a little bit. I've, I've been hearing um, just like from various people, friends of mine that um, people are starting to hire chief wellness officers, And I just think it's a really interesting time. So tell me about the resetting the world. Like, tell me a little bit about why you guys chose that theme. Um, Well, (laughs) um, it's really actually kind of a a fun and interesting story. Um, We were asked by the Vatican to contribute, (laughs) yes, to contribute a series of white papers. The um, Pope was going to take a look at the world post-COVID, reimagine the world post-COVID. Um, what's that going to do to public health? What's it doing to all the sort of, um, you know, areas um, that concern him? And one of them was prevention and wellness. And because of our summit in Singapore, where Martin Palmer, who is a scholar, religious scholar, just mm-hmm. an incredible man, um, mm-hmm. was so impressed with us and the summit and does work for the Vatican, he said the only people that can write those papers are the Global Wellness Institute. So we wow. worked with the Vatican and produced a series of papers. And those papers, the, the first one was entitled Resetting the World with Wellness. And okay. it resonated with us. We, our researchers still don't remember when they came up with it or if who did or what. But <laughs> it was one of those things that just sort of naturally was like an aha. We heard it and we thought, okay, that's the theme for the year. That's the theme for the summit. That's the theme for yeah. everything we're doing. So um, – it grew out of a relationship with the Vatican, actually. Amazing. And, um, and it resonated with everyone. And we started to use it and call some of the, the, the calls that we were hosting that I mentioned earlier. Um, you know, the, first there were the collaboration calls and there were the resetting calls. You know, so we, we've been using it. And, um, and Susie will tell you about a book that has come out with um, oh. someone who works with us, Terry Mallorette. She's going to, in fact, hold it up, which your which your listeners can't see, but I'm oh, sure we'll, you'll post a link. Yeah, we'll put um, it on the It's website. called the oh. COVID-19, The Great Reset. Oh. And it's written by E. Thierry Mallorette, who writes Our Wellness Barometer. He's a global economist and the um, head of the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab. Wow. And Thierry is our masterclass next Wednesday. Oh, good. Club. Okay. Yeah. And um, yeah. so anyway, I just, registered. just seems to be the word. It seems to be the word of the year. You're saying you just registered, Steve? I, I just registered, yeah, this morning. All right, I'm master class. Yes. Okay, good. Very we'll put good. it out on our social. I mean, it'll be past it, but um. And you know, one, one thing, if you don't mind, I was just going to jump in because I wanted to share some numbers. Um, you know, so much of what we discuss, you know, everybody, we all, you know, get excited about, but the world reacts to 
numbers mm-hmm. and figures in terms of, you know, so, so if you don't mind, I'm just going to share that the wellness economy, which we've helped, you know, put a framework um, around, which mm-hmm. includes, you know, the spa and hospitality, wellness, real estate, the beauty and anti-aging, the um, fitness arena, nutrition, um, prevention, and so on, is a $4.5 trillion economy. And of that, the latest research, which is what we do at the Institute, is that the real estate, wellness real estate arena, is $134 billion um, bubble. We call it a bubble. Mm-hmm. Um And those numbers are what people start looking at to get an understanding of what the um, arena is. So they start thinking, wow, that's, you know, 134 billion revenue globally and Mm -hmm. going up. um, The spa economy is 119 billion. Workplace wellness is only at this point 48 billion. Um, The, Mm -hmm. you know, huge bubbles are, you know, beauty and anti-aging. Fitness is huge. Wellness tourism is huge. Although I would say it was huge. It's certainly going to be smaller going forward. But those numbers, and they are all available on the website, I would just say that that's an important part of the discussion because, you know, when people are going to buy a place, um, you know, in a residential uh, community, they do care about, is this going to be successful? Will my uh, investment go up? Um, And so we've done some of that research, and it's all quite favorable for wellness, real estate, and communities, which is what is helping fuel the interest by government and, um, you know, real estate companies and uh, people in general. Yeah, that's great. Um, I have one sort of silly question I'm going to ask you that I just thought of is because both of you are so deep into this. What do each of you guys do sort of on a day to day? No, just like to really like, is there one thing that you do to sort of keep yourself, whether that's fit or centered? You know, it could be a spa treatment. It could be meditation. Is there something that you guys have really found that is like you really your thing. Well, definitely it's been valuable as I'm sure we all feel to be part of this wellness momentum because we learn, you know, eating healthfully, eating, you know, things fresh, um, exercising, uh, being outdoors, uh, meditation. I would say for me, that's the latest piece that was added about a year ago when I learned a lot more about, um, uh, Meditation from Bob Roth, who um, heads up TM for, uh, um, I think, globally. And, uh, you know, I learned that that was another part of the important uh, fabric of of what we do. So I would say that, um, you know, sleep is important. Going to bed early and incorporating these kinds of things into life, um, you know, has, you know, I would say it's been a journey for me, but I'm at a place where, and, and the pause, you, you, Steve, you mentioned the pause. I think the pause has been helpful because what the pause did for me is that it stopped me from traveling. I was traveling so much and I loved the traveling and I was learning a lot, but I realized that, um, you know, I didn't now that I'm not traveling, I'm still getting a lot done. And um, I would say I'm probably healthier for not mm-hmm. traveling constantly and uh, getting more of a routine going. So um, I, I just, I have to say, I incorporate most of what we teach or what we learn in this arena. And I'm learning all the time. And one thing I'm learning also is that, um, you know, a weekend in a wellness resort is not enough. <laughs> You know, staying longer is better or living in an environment. Mm -hmm. Um, And in fact, I, you know, when my husband and I moved to Miami, we purposely chose a place that has, um, you know, a a spa incorporated. We live at the um, Epic in Miami, Mm -hmm. Epic Residences, and there's an exhale spa here. So, you know, I can get massages. I can go manicure, pedicure. I can work out in their, you know, uh, mm-hmm. techno gym, gym. And so <laughs> that all has, you know, helped in, incorporate it into my life. So in a way, it's not serenby, but it's kind of like a mini uh, yeah. serenby in that I'm in a place where all of these things are easily available. Sure. What about you, Nancy? And for me, um, I incorporated TM into my life. Yeah. Um, so I do that religiously and that's been very, very helpful, particularly at these times. Mm -hmm. I 
um, spend a lot of time with family and um, my grandchildren. And so for me, there's a huge piece of wellness that is about the connection to people. I talk to people a lot. I have really like strong friendships. Mm -hmm. Um, Those things matter a lot to me. Being outside and taking walks Mm -hmm. and all of that is fantastic and fortunate to be able to do that in our house in Connecticut, where I have been for six months um, (laughs) outside of Manhattan. But, uh, but, you know, even in Manhattan, you know, walking and stuff, but it's the connection to people that I find grounds me, inspires me, Mm -hmm. keeps me sane. Um, Mm -hmm. And, and, um, and playing with my grandchildren that I would say is one of the most joyful and, um, you know, one of the healthiest things to do. Family. Yeah. Come join us, but I can see Steve smiling because about the grandchildren. (laughs) Yeah. We talk about that. Absolutely. You know, of course, you know, so fortunate that all the grandkids have uh, moved here and I get to see them all the time. And, uh, but it's, it's going back to Nancy, what you said, because it's, it's everyone's children here interacts with adults in very unusual or very natural ways uh, that we don't see anymore. And it, 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 it's a whole community yeah. that, uh, that, that embraces all the kids as they walk down the streets and on the front porches. And, and uh, many times you're you know looking around to see where the parents are for a yeah. seven, eight year old. Well, it's okay. Th- th- they're home. Uh, the, the, the kids are totally fine. You know, they're headed to the woods with friends. <laughs> uh, it's really a different thing. Yeah, I will, I will look back on this time and um, be very grateful that no one is ill um, in our family and be very grateful that we could, you know, be where we are. We were here with our kids and grandkids this entire time. And I will, I will look back at this time as something to cherish because that time day to day, you never get with your grandchildren now. I mean, uh, you know, 24 seven or thank God they slept some a little bit. Um, you know, has, has been just a really rich and important time that, that was, you know, the silver lining for me. And one thing that we're, we're starting to put our arms around to figure yeah. out is, um, uh, senior housing and, and, and as the baby boomers are starting to really age and look at these issues, um, uh, uh, this is, I think, one of the big trends, uh, yeah. in, in, in how do we do that in a, in a healthier, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. both mental and, mm-hmm. and physical way. So one of the things I want to know is the future, right? And so that could be what's happening at the summit or what you guys see 12 to 18 months out. Like what's out there? What are, what can we expect? Well, I'm going to say I'll handle the summit, but Susie really has okay. the crystal ball because she is the visionary in the industry, Perfect. hands down. So, you know, I'm sure that Susie has been thinking a lot after hearing what we've been hearing and reading everything about what, you know, the industry might, you know, what it might look like. And, you know, at the summit, at the breakers in November, we are going to really try to chart a course for the future of the industry. I mean, we're seriously looking at what that's going to be like. And, you know, what we're seeing is we're seeing a tremendous focus on technology, a tremendous focus on wellness communities, where people live, how they Mm -hmm. live, how they work. Um, And of course, you know, issues of mental wellness, issues of diversity and inclusion. Those are things that are going to be Um, prominent as topics, uh, I would say, on the agenda. Also, you know, something we didn't talk about when we're talking about meditation is breath work. Mm -hmm. And we've all become a little bit more aware of that and the importance of that. And we did already announce that James Nestor, who's a New York Times bestselling author, is going to speak on his book, Breath you know, was important to Susie and I read it. We we made the team read it, you know. Um, So we're looking at all of that. Um, So I think, you know, there's there are a lot of uh, sectors of the industry that are booming. We're running a competition um, for mm-hmm. innovation, which mm-hmm. we'll announce next week. Um, and we're going to have a tech innovation pavilion mm-hmm. at the breakers where people can showcase what they're doing ah. in wellness technologies. So we're really looking at that very, very carefully. We think it's going to have a tremendous impact going forward. So I just, you know, there's going to be some really interesting things Good. happening at the summit. And experiences. For sounds people. exciting, Susie. And yes, and um, so thank you for that. And, and certainly on the agenda at the summit will be 
um, you know, quite a few discussions about wellness communities and wellness real estate and um, mental wellness, because our research this year from the Institute is on mental wellness. So those and technology, as Nancy said, um, you know, uh, in the book, uh, COVID-19, The Great Reset, that Terry Mallard wrote with uh, Klaus Schwab, they say that the three areas that will have a big bump because of um, COVID is technology, health, and wellness. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, that'll be a discussion. And, you know, since you ask about my crystal ball, I always like to... Uh, to share it with people who are thoughtful because sometimes what I talk about that I see, you know, not everybody is sort of getting it. <laughs> I remember when we talked about uh, wellness tourism and the entire board said, oh, what's that? That's never going to happen. <laughs> um, and the same thing with wellness real estate. It was like, you know, years ago, it's like, what's that? So, you know, I, I'm going to share with you what I'm sort of seeing is developing that I'm excited about. And that is that people are starting to sort of see, and I think we can help with that, that there is this issue of health care and there's this issue of self-care. Yeah. And that those are important things to work together, but to keep distinct. Because as we know, with health care, you know, there are limitations. It's expensive. There's, you know, a lot of um, orientation towards curing and, you know, medication and so on. But then there is self-care and wellness and well-being are really that in that arena. Mm-hmm. So if we can galvanize people to get involved with their own self-care, which you do in communities, which we do in, you know, in spa, which, you know, everyone can do. Then we have a great combination Mm -hmm. of people making lifestyle changes for the better for themselves and then having a healthcare system, ideally, that also is helping. But we're not just relying on healthcare. Mm -hmm. So I see that going down the road, and I'm actually very optimistic because I think that combination is really ideal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I like the self-care. It has, um, over the years, almost felt selfish, (laughs) you know, and so I think trying to, to really show people that it's not, it's not a selfish act to do those things for yourself, to care for yourself. And I think, you know, the society, we're so go, 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 right. Um, And we're all like very results driven. And so how is it more to your point care than outcomes? Um, uh, You know, not that we don't, you know, an outcome's not good, but um, it's also true that the outcomes of self-care have an enormously powerful ripple effect um, on the world and yes. on public health and on preventable disease and all of those things. I mean, you know, you may feel like getting a massage or, you know, taking care of your immune system or whatever feels in any way, you know, mm-hmm. self-involved, but it actually has tremendous positive yeah. impact on the world. Um, you know, I, what is it? 75% of doctor's visits or, you know, could be avoided because they relate to lifestyle choices. I mean, that's, you know, that's mm-hmm. powerful stuff. Not only visits, death. Yep. The you know, majority of our deaths now yeah. are due to lifestyle. So I'll just, you know, I'll just do another shameless plug and say, check out our wellness moonshot, a world free of preventable disease, which is another way everyone can get Great. involved in what we're doing. Um, we've got over 6 million people wow. involved in that now over 800 country, uh, companies, and it's glo- completely global and really interesting. And we give you the tools every month to take care of yourself and as a result, take care of you know the planet and the world. And it's a really powerful thing. Well, that's wonderful. That's a perfect way to end. And I'll just wrap this up by saying, you know, thank you guys, because this connection and it's really a joy and an honor to get to have this time with you guys and get to know you better. And it is really a lovely part of our, you know, week to be able to do this. So thank you so much for your time. I really do. Yeah. Thank you for having us. And um, we're very excited to be at Sarah and B um, right after our summit wraps. I will be there too. And um, there'll be quite a group and, and I'm just really excited delighted that you're so in that we really are partnering with uh with serenby this year and i think it'll it'll speak volumes for many years to come yeah thank you guys so much we're looking forward to it thank you
Thank you for listening to Serenby Stories. New episodes are available on Mondays. Please rate and review the podcast and visit our website to learn more about upcoming guests, episodes, and everything biophilia at serenbystories.com. <laughs>